What's up everybody? My name is Big Tex and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw some traditional tattoo flash on the iPad in Procreate. Um, you don't have to use Procreate, you can use whatever program you like, but hopefully you pick up some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. So here's a flash page that I drew up in Procreate a while back. Let's go through the steps to have it looking more like paper and less like an iPad. So the first thing that we want to do is take a look at this paper texture. So the one that I'm using is from the Tattoo Smart Spit Shade set, and they have these textures on top, this paper sheen, paper shadow, and paper base on the bottom. So that's what I use to give it that texture. If you zoom in, you can see it's kind of a watercolor paper looking texture. And, uh, but you can find any number of textures online. It doesn't have to be this specific one. The important thing is the blending modes. So for example, if you click this little letter next to it, let me unlock that. If you click that little letter, it brings up your blending modes. On this one, they have screen, linear burn. Um, you can also use multiply. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to sort of imprint the texture that's on top onto the layers below. So this little art layer, which is my flash, it's going to imprint that texture onto my lines and my paint. So it adds some little imperfections, which is really nice. Another important element to tattoo flash is reference. So a lot of old American traditional designs were taken from book illustrations, advertisements, old paintings, or any number of things. And throughout the years, artists traced those, repurposed them, um, added their own spin, and at the same time made the designs more appropriate for actually tattooing. So tracing old flash is a great way to develop your muscle memory and learn what shapes make up what designs and where all of the important elements go. So for this sheet, a lot of the reference I'm using is from a book called Vintage Tattoo Flash by Jonathan Shaw, which has tons of great stuff and I highly recommend it. For today, let's focus on this eagle over here. So let's drop in the reference that I used. I'm gonna insert a photo and we're gonna take a look just at this eagle. So as you can see, I used um, a lot of the general shape and elements and added my own spin, made it a little cuter, did the colors slightly different. Um, but yeah, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to trace over it and just improvise a little. It's not gonna be exactly what my old design was, um, but we'll have an outline to work with and you can kind of see um, step by step what I do. So let's get started on that. So here's my red pencil draft. I don't get super specific with this one, but I have the basic idea which acts like a guide for my outline. So since we want it to look more like traditional flash, I'd suggest using something similar to what most flash painters use, which is gonna be a Sharpie or a nib. So the one I like to use is again from that Tattoo Smart uh, Spit Shade set. And you can see, let's go up to that. Uh, it's called this RA New Sharpie, like a Sharpie. So I like to use this, kind of has that textured um, edge to it. And let's make a new layer. So it's not so perfect, uh, but I like that because it's gonna give you that sort of realistic feel. And like I said before, uh, the more textured and imperfect it looks, um, the more authentic and just cool it's gonna look. So. Now I'm gonna bring the opacity down on my red pencil layer, and we're going to trace our outline on top of that. So let's get to it. So there's my outline. Um, don't be super serious about every line being perfect. While you're drawing, certain lines are going to overlap. Circles aren't gonna be perfect. Some lines might be a little thicker than others. And all those human elements add a great touch to your art. So now we're going to take this layer and we're going to set the blend mode to darken. And what that's gonna do 
is again it's kind of going to imprint some of that uh, texture onto our lines if i zoom in we got a little variation in our black um, which just adds a little cool element. All right, so now it's time for the most fun part, the spit shading. So let's make a new layer underneath. And uh, let's pick a brush that's like a watercolor brush. That's what uh, most Tattoo Flash, that's what they're coloring with is watercolor and watercolor brush. So the one that I use is from that Tattoo Smart Spit Shade set. And the one that I like a bunch is this No Use This to Paint. So the thing that's cool about this particular brush is it's not 100% black. If I paint, I can paint over it. It gets darker in certain areas. And um, I like that because it's, it's also not gonna be exactly the same as my lines, if you see that, overlaps a little. There's like a little bit of variation. Um, and I think that's cool because when you're painting on real paper, you're going to have little inconsistencies and nothing is going to be 100% black like on a computer. So I think that's cool. I, I actually like that. So let's get to the painting. The first part is going to be laying down the black. So I'm going to pick a little section, make sure I'm on another layer. I'm going to pick a little section where I want to add in some black. So I'm going to do this little part of the back side of the wing. Whoops. So when you're spit shading to get the actual gradient or fade out, um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this effect with the smudge tool because most of the time when you're painting on paper, you're gonna have one brush that's gonna lay down the paint. You're gonna have another brush with water or spit that sort of fans out the ink and gives you that nice fade that all of that traditional tattoo flash has. So the smudge tool is gonna to work for us for this. Um, you can pick your same watercolor brush you picked uh, to paint, um, or this Tattoo Smart set, it's got a bunch of different ones. Um, let's do this running blend, gonna be similar to a watercolor brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, oh, that's a little too hard. We're gonna go from one edge to the other, Kind of just give us a nice little gradient. So that's the kind of gradients you're gonna see on traditional flash all over the place. So you can do two things. Um, if I have a little area like this, I can start from the outside. I go all the way across the black and I push in. That's one technique. Or you can start from, whoops, you can start from more of the black and kind of pull it out and go back. Either way works, just depends on the effect you want. So I'm gonna do this one from here. I'm gonna go all the way here. My blend doesn't have to be perfect. And oh, let's make that a little smoother. Yeah, cool, that works for me. So let's do some other sections with the black. So now that we have the black, let's add our colors on separate layers. And I like to keep my colors really simple. I usually stick to four basic colors, red, yellow, brown, and green most of the time. And I usually only use one shade of each at a time. And I let the blending sort of do the talking and do the effects for me instead of having uh, a bunch of different shades of red, for example. So. If you want more contrast, you can try fading these two colors together. Let's see what that looks like. So for example, if I'm sticking to those basic colors, something cool that I could do on the wing is I can take my brown, I'll add that to this bottom part down here. I'll fade it out a little bit. And then underneath that, we'll do a little golden yellow. And we get sort of a cool little fade of that dark delight, but we're still sticking to a simple color palette. So let's color in a few parts. All 
right, so now that we have our colors in there, let's take these paint layers, set them to darken. And there you have it, a traditional eagle on the iPad. So those are the basic techniques that I use to make something like this in the end. Found some flash, laid down my black, used my smudge brush to get these little fades. And in the end, got something that looks a little more traditional, a little more realistic with a few little imperfections, which I think is really cool. And uh, yeah, that's how you do it. Traditional flash on the iPad. So there you have it. Those are the techniques that I use to create some realistic looking traditional tattoo flash on the iPad in Procreate. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the Tattoo Smart set that has a lot of the brushes that I like, um, the reference book that I use, Vintage Tattoo Flash, which I really recommend. I'll leave a link to my Instagram, which has a bunch of other flash pages that I've made that you can check out for some inspiration and ideas. And uh, lastly, I'll leave a little donation link below. So if you like this video, throw me a buck or two and uh, I'd really appreciate it and it'll help me make more cool videos. Hopefully this inspires you to make some of your own flash on the iPad and just have fun with it. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.